more fair to him. He could have four or five hits in the first two games this weekend, so hopefully he'll find some holes. It's a gorgeous afternoon. Temps in the low 70s. And we're off and running as Mayer's first pitch. A fastball out of the zone. Alex Ziegler calling balls at strikes today. Eric Gaucher at third. The crew chief is Scott Klein at second. And Richard Riley, the first base. Up part. And Curley and Pounds one foul. And for Mizzou, it's going to be a, a pretty patchwork effort, you would imagine, on the mound today. Because Bryce Mayer, he did throw earlier this week. Three to third inning. Squall was back on Wednesday. Kerwin batting in the leadoff spot for the second straight game after Colby Shelton started in the leadoff spot on Friday. And Mizzou, they've been able to get through this first inning scoreless in both of the first two games, and then they've put the first run on the board both times. Remember, Florida has not led at the end of an inning yet in this series. One, two. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Down goes Kerwin. Just the start that Bryce Mayer won. We've talked about it in each of the prior two games of this series and uh, about how Missouri needs to get off to good starts, especially on the mound, get settled in just for the confidence that provides. I think maybe it's time to start saying or stop saying that because this is a Mizzou team that has looked, if anything, more confident than the records would justify coming into this weekend. And that's been borne out with back to back one run victories. Here is Jack Caglione who Left the yard yesterday at 118 miles an hour. He swings over the top of the first pitch he sees. The wind has been howling out to left field all day today. Ganglione and BP, three straight swings. He sent it not only over the batter's eye, over the pine trees in straightaway center. Taylor Stadium could be a launching pad today as he spins on a breaking ball. It's a great day. If you're at the plate today, it could be a, a tough one for Bryce Mayer. It could be a tough one for Caglione on the other side, though. He has been really tough against the opposition throughout a conference play and now into SEC play. That's fouled off with J.D. Hernandez, who's having maybe as good a series at the plate as anybody. A series that has not seen many runs. Florida's offense so far, just four total through the first couple of days. Another one, two, and low it outside. How about Missouri, Max, going with the All Blacks for the sunniest and hottest day of the series by some distance? Long look in. Here comes the 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back K's for Bryce Mayer. Top of this Florida lineup, we talked about it a lot on Friday. You know, the top four hitters came in all with OPSs over 1,000. Caglion, of course, leading the bunch at better than 1,250 uh, coming into this series. And they just have not been able to make a consistent impact on the series. Caglion had the one big swing. He's had a couple of hits. Hasn't played badly by any stretch, but none of them have stood out the way we expected. Ty Evans, the 3 0 hitter, has struggled tremendously so far this series. 0 for 8, six strikeouts. He's reached what time? He drew a free pass yesterday. He is 0 for his last 15. Now you entered this series on Friday, hitting 385 at conference play, and that's down to 319 now. To be fair to him, Max, I think uh, we both felt that 3-2 pitch on which he struck out looking with the bases loaded in the late innings yesterday probably should have been ball four. And uh, if so, we could be talking about him having a key plate appearance that flipped the series around for Florida. That would have tied the game had it been uh, ruled ball four and given Florida a chance to take the lead with the bases still loaded in two outs. And as we talked about yesterday, if the Gators had found a way to win that game, they would have fancied themselves to win the series today. Yeah, yesterday was a huge one because Florida knew coming into the series finale, they would give the ball to their best starting pitcher throughout this season. And Mizzou was TBD really until, what, an hour or two ago. They're trying to sit down the side in order. And the count now full. Mayer redshirted last year, spent his first two seasons at St. Charles Community College. This is his first SEC start. Trying to guide his team to their first ever sweep of the Florida Gators. Trying to set the tone here in the first inning. And Ty Evans stays alive. Obviously, Max, you have to be careful about taking too passive an approach early in the game because these Florida batters want to swing and with good reason. But Bryce Mayer, even in some good outings his last few times on the bump, hasn't gone more than three and a third innings since uh, 
pitching against Purdue Fort Wayne almost a full month ago. And he just threw three and a third against UT Martin on Wednesday. So you wouldn't think there's going to be a ton of length here. I would want the Gators hitters to be at least patient enough to work the pitch count a little bit unless they're getting great pitches to hit. 17th pitch of the inning on its way. And fisted on the ground, foul. Yeah, last three outings have been terrific for Mayer coming out of the bullpen. Eight of two-thirds combined. No runs, only three base hits and 11 Ks. And he's come out of the gates today. Strikeout, strikeout, Curlin and Caglione. They're making him work here in the first. So he threw three and a third innings. You could potentially see Mizzou and Carrick Jackson maybe go to Daniel Whistler at some point this afternoon. He started the game back on Tuesday. But when you're trying to look at guys who have SEC experience or guys who can give you length, who have been reliable this year, there's not a lot of guys left for the Tigers here in the finale. Another payoff coming. And that's rocketed down the left field line, but foul. Now this is one of the lengthier at-bats we have seen all series long. And what it has done is it has really blossomed Rice Mayer's pitch count here early. Tenth pitch of the A-B coming. Colby Shelton is the man on deck. Ty Evans looking for his first base hit of the weekend. And he'll see an 11th pitch. This is a toughness, you feel like, in this A-B that we haven't seen from the Gators yet so far this weekend. Yeah, I think uh, at times they've done a good job seeing pitches, but they haven't looked as comfortable late in counts as Evans does here. Certainly he has. And he coerces a walk. What a plate appearance for Ty Evans, his second walk in as many digs. That's really well done. I think uh, that plate appearance alone makes this a much more successful inning than it was looking two batters in, regardless of what happens here. And, uh, and then you wonder if, if Florida, as we talked about, not a very aggressive base running team, and Evans has just one steal on one attempt this year, if they would consider trying to run here with two outs. Colby Shelton, the cleanup hitter in the shortstop, takes a strike. He's just one for nine with five strikeouts of South this weekend. The one base hit came yesterday. It was a bunt single. He's just two for his last 26. And down to the count now, nothing in two. This is a guy in Colby Shelton who was one of the best hitters in the country. He was hitting 352 back on March 16th. The average now as he enters this Sunday series finale down to 259. And it breaks from first and it's cut on and missed. Bryce Mayer. He started, he's been on base to lead off the bottom of the first inning at both games and come around to score both times. Curtis is one of just two players in this series. They're both on the Mizzou side that have three hits. It's him and J.D. Air Hernandez, and this is played perfectly by Shelnut, who is far in at third, and that makes that a comfortable play for out number one. It's interesting you make that point, Max, because we've talked consistently about the need for Missouri to get off to good starts for confidence purposes, but maybe it's uh, with Curtis having reached twice and coming to score in each of the first two bottom halves of the first inning in this series, it's Florida that needed to get a lead off out to start this bottom of the first and Caglione did just that I think uh, important for him to establish early for his teammates as much as anybody that the tone is going to be a little bit different today. Next ball at 93 he's got the heater he's got that slurvy curveball in the low to mid 80s it's dynamite against lefties the changeup has been great to right handed batters this year. Intimidating presence as he's facing Jackson Beam in the right fielder. Even looking for his first knock of the series. He's 0 for 9 with five strikeouts. Just 2 for 28. He's hitting 71 in conference action. I like the Caglion after he got Curtis out. He was right back on the mound, glove in front of his face, pretty much ready to deliver the pitch before Beeman was even in the box. And really all three of these Florida starters this weekend have wanted to pitch with tempo and been at their best when they pitch with tempo. Uh, in particular, I thought you could tell with Liam Peterson when he got comfortable, his pace went way up. That spoiled foul, and the count is run full. After Beeman, it's Trevor Austin, then Jackson Lovich. As he was struck first in each of the first two games. Offense has been very hard to come by. That could change today with the win, but you're still facing one of the best pitchers in the country. And that's just a little bit off the plate. Ball four, first base runner for Mizzou. Walk number 23 of this season for Jack Caglione. 
Also a team leading 17th walk of the season for Jackson Beeman. That's why he's in the two hole. Maybe the bat's been struggling, but the eye very consistent. And that's what Carrick Jackson really appreciates from the sophomore. Brings up Trevor Austin. Kangley all working from the stretch for the first time. And bounce that in. And that's why Tanner Garrison is back behind the plate today. One of the many reasons. He steals a ton of strikes. He's got strong hands, moves the ball late, kind of waits for it to come. Late movement, always great movement if you're a catcher, stealing strikes, but terrific at keeping the ball in front of him, too. Him and J.D. Hernandez both had very solid series behind the plate, and they both are very great sound defensive catchers. And we saw yesterday, obviously, how important that can be. Missouri scored all four of his runs with two outs, two of them on wild pitches. Snap throw to first. Not in time. You don't want to get two off because that was a ball, and it is 3-0 and now. Now, obviously, I don't want to throw Luke Heyman too much under the bus because I don't think either of those wild pitches that scored Missouri runs yesterday were Tough. easy stops. In particular, the second one almost impossible. But even the first one, he still got his chest protector on it. It just kicked away from him. And it's back-to-back -back three passes. Beeman, then Austin. Austin on just four pitches. We talked about walks as soon as he was out there. That's been the problem. Not that he's had many problems, and he come in with a 2-1-8 ERA. You could easily say, I think, he's the best Sunday starter in college baseball. Well, yeah. and the walks just matter so much less when you have the strikeout stuff that he does. Not that it's still, you wouldn't prefer to keep guys off the base pass in general. But as compared to a guy who pitches to contact, if you let a couple of guys on base, now you're hoping you don't get a ground ball with eyes, right? For Caglione, he can easily bounce right back and strike out two guys in a row. It doesn't matter who's on base. Jackson Lovich steps in and takes his strike. Clean Love that hit. call, too. Go with the changeup on the first pitch. Just try something to reset him a little bit. It's been a pitch where when he's been at his best, the changeup has been nasty. Guy was only allowed five earned runs in his last five starts. We'll throw you that cutter, too. Lovich, two for seven. He's scored a couple of runs this weekend. Also drawn three passes. He has reached five times in this series. Nobody else could say that on either team. Mm. That's a good spot. He's kind of picking at the corners right now. He's close, just a little off. Yeah, I think he's had a, a, a couple close ones now. Probably time for the Florida coaching staff to start working Alex Eagler, the home plate umpire. That's cued off the end of the back towards Heyman. Caglione over to cover. Really athletic when he's played first and when he's coming off the mound. And there's two down, Beeman to third, Austin behind him to second. Again, it's the changeup, though, and, and Lovich way out in front, just a little cue shot. For a moment, you wondered if that could be real trouble for Florida. If, if Lovich had gotten a little bit less on it, it could have been into that Bermuda Triangle of sorts between Heyman, Curland, and Caglione on the right side of the infield. But uh, in the end, there's enough on it that Heyman and Caglione made that look really quite simple. This is deja vu, because Pierre was up in the first inning with men at second and third, two outs and no score in the first inning yesterday. Then it was a wild pitch, and then it was the RBI single that he stuck through the right side of the infield. Freshman who's driven in 11 this year. And he's in front of the count, two and nothing. It's the kind of thing to be aware of, too. Uh, you know, even as a freshman, it's something for Caden Pierre to be thinking about that in this situation, even with Garrison behind the plate, who we said it has been very good defensively, they're going to be a little bit hesitant to, to try to spike anything here because the last thing you want to do with a guy on the mound like Caglione is give up a run essentially for free on a wild pitch the way Florida did a couple of times with two outs yesterday. And it gets away from Garrison and scoring from third is Jackson Beeman. Deja vu all over again. A wild pitch with two outs in the first inning. And Mizzou on the board first again. I want to see this a second time to be sure. But as much as we praised Garrison, I think he probably could have done a little bit better with this. It looked like an instance where he reached down and tried to backhand this. Yeah, for me, and it's the downside of having that one knee down already. But, but for me, that's a situation you'd like to see him try to get his, his body behind the ball and keep that in front of him. Rather than, than reaching for it. I'd say the one-time thing, he's on a knee, but you miss your spot by that much, you are putting your catcher in a very difficult position. So at the corners for J.D. Air Hernandez, who's been maybe the best of anybody at the plate this week. Uh, the RBI walk-off single back on Friday in the 11th on his birthday. He was emotional with us post-game. His family's in town from New Jersey. He's got three base hits already this weekend. And the count evens up. 
It's a one run home on no base hits. The ball has not left the infield. Two ground balls, three walks, and the wild pitch. And the off speeds with Look at Salad, though, with the righty hitters. They're just struggling to locate the fastball a little bit right now. If he can get out of this inning with just a one run and give himself a chance to reset in the dugout, I think that'd be a win. But two to Hernandez. And that's fouled away. After Hernandez, it's Matt Garcia. And on a day when the wind is blowing out in the manner in which it is, and Florida comes into today with 63 all runs, top 10 in the country, one run deficit, as poor as the bats have been, does not feel like much, I'm sure, to the Gators. Hernandez bloops on this could be trouble if it's fair and it is down the right field line it goes Austin will score Pierre gets the wave around third the relay to the plate not in time two run double J.D. Hernandez Mr. Clutch for the Tigers Max that's six first inning runs for Missouri in this series double what they had the entire SEC season coming in and I think this was a little bit sloppy from both teams. So it's a nice piece of hitting from Hernandez. He is fortunate that this falls in. Caden Peer didn't look convinced that he should be getting the wave around third. He was not going full bore. He kind of stumbled. And then Cade Curland on the relay, you could see him put his hands out after he threw it. So watch Peer here, kind of throttle down for a second and look up. And that kicks away again from Garrison to allow Hernandez to move up to third. The ball goes out of play. The uh, umpires will keep him at third. But you could see Curlin on that replay. He hesitates throwing home, and then he's got his arms out saying, why aren't you guys telling me? So watch Caden Peer. He takes a stutter step going around third. He looks up. He doesn't look confident. He almost stumbles. Not very good base running. But the relay is late from Curlin, who had to double or even triple clutch. See what a time this could be. He said it a few times for Matt Garcia to tally his first knock in SEC play this year. And he popped one up. Shallow center, Curlin going out, dives and can't make the catch. Another two-out RBI base hit. Matt Garcia gets his first of conference play. He's one for 34 now, and everything is forward for Mizzou. The wind's blowing out, and it was, it's clear from the beginning. Curlin didn't think he was going to have to go that far out, and why would he? That ball looked like it wasn't going to even get into the outfield grass by much. Look how far he is into center field by the time this ball comes down. And maybe he gets just a little bit of the webbing on it, but not much. And it drops in for a first Garcia hit. That's seven first inning runs in the series for Missouri. And their last eight runs have all come with two outs. The lack of clutch hitting that we saw on Friday with both teams combined were 0 for 21 with two down. And Mizzou, through 10 innings, was 1 for 16 with runners at scoring position between the walk-off hit. Been a different story the last couple of days for Mizzou. They were clutch yesterday, and they had some fortuitous bounces and wild pitches you could say go their way. They didn't have a ton of base runners in game two, but able to get the job done, and now a four spot in the first inning, and this is batter number eight and pitch number 30. Drew Colbertson, who's 0 for 8 with four strikeouts this weekend. Freshman looking for his first knock on the series. Garcia always a threat to move and a swing and a miss after the fastball. But again, it's sort of the same story for Florida. Missouri got four runs on just four hits in yesterday's game. Four runs on just two hits in this inning. Three Caglione walks, a couple of wild pitches. And Colbertson sends a flare down the right field line, but that's slicing five. Yeah, I mean, you get three walks, you get a couple of wild pitches, and then all of a sudden, two balls that aren't hit that hard. You get a two-run double, an RBI single, and now it's 4 nothing. And, I mean, Caglione had only allowed 15 hits all year to this point. To this inning, leading to four runs. 2-2 two -two is ripped right back up the middle. Shelton slides, had it for a second, lost it, everybody sing. It's sloppy base running by Garcia, a veteran should know to go in hard there and, and pop up slide as opposed to having to throttle down and, and risk getting caught at second because once Shelton knocks that ball down, his only play is going to be to Curland at second base. Garcia gets away with it. It's not a bad effort here by Shelton. Just doesn't glove it cleanly, and he makes the right play to go to second base, but you can see Garcia beats it. Mizzou will bat around in the first inning as Brock Daniels comes up empty. What a start for Mizzou, looking for their first ever sweep of Florida. 
Brock Daniels this year hitting 444 with two down. And just when you're thinking, Aunt Tariq today, Florida has a huge advantage when it comes to pitchers available and the starters today. And all Mizzou is that slowly rolled out towards Shelton. Charging, that will be the final out of the... A great start out of the gates here is Luke Heyman hits what deep out towards center field. Senate Pier all the way back to the wall. One pitch into the second. And Luke Heyman belts his second homer of the week yet. I told you Luke Heyman has hit the ball really, really well in this series. It's the rare instance where a guy has two homers just a couple of innings into game three, and you can still say he's been unlucky with batted balls in the series. But good to see Luke Heyman get uh, at least some of his just desserts for how well he has hit the ball this weekend in Columbia. And obviously, the wind blowing out makes it a lot easier. That's a ball that probably doesn't go out on Friday when the wind was really unforgiving. The wind today makes it easier, but he hit that really well to the opposite field. Tyler Shelma brushed back by some chin music. So Heyman becomes the first Florida batter to have three hits this weekend. He's got a couple of home runs, two of the team's three. Caglione has the other. And now Bryce Mayer is falling behind and or a trip out to the mound from J.D. Hernandez. You know, I would think as well, Max, that, that that Heyman homer, even though it's just a solo shot after Missouri put up a four spot in the first inning, does do something to get the Gators dug out just a, a little bit galvanized. Obviously, it's been a really frustrating weekend for them, and you can understand if there are some heads that are hanging. At the same time, they still have 24 outs left with which to work, and they have a lineup capable of doing this at any given moment. And they have wind that's only going to make it easier today to get balls to carry out of here. That was really well hit, especially just to the right of center field for a right-handed batter. There is more than enough time for Florida to come back in this game. Their offensive prowess, I mean, they made Taylor Stadium look like they were playing in a sandbox in BP today with the win. We saw a lot of swigs just like what we had from Luke Heyman. 2 1 for Bryce Mayer. Smoked right off the facing, looked like in the Mizzou dugout. Zach down there in the third base camera. Well, I was coming at him in a hurry. No Sundays off here. Looks no worse for it, though. We got ice. Do we? Somewhere. Full count to Tyler Shelna. And he drives one out to left field. Curtis back towards the wall and makes the grab a couple of steps onto the track. Again, I'm sure the Florida dugout and a lot of Florida fans are frustrated and a little bit dejected at the moment with, with how this weekend has gone. But at the same time, if we'd been, had an honest conversation before the game about how many runs would you expect Florida to score in this game, considering how little Missouri has left on its pitching staff and how hard the wind is blowing out to center field, I think we would have settled on a number higher than four. So as much as that first inning hurts, I don't feel like the Gators are out of this game one bit. Well, there is way too much baseball in the dangerous offense and very friendly hitting conditions with the warm weather. It's 73 at first pinch, the wind blowing out. Landon Russell making back-to-back -back starts for the eighth spot yesterday. Moves up one to the seven hole. And the triple down the right field line was one for four. I know he has just the one hit, but he looked really confident at the plate. A lot more than I expected for a first-year Gator who doesn't have a lot of experience yet. Janier Hernandez is so expressive and demonstrative with his reactions uh, when he's catching and when he's at the plate. Saw in the first inning back on Friday, right? Turned around to the dugout. Was very confident and then had to walk off base hit. And Russell goes down swinging. Strike count number four already for Mayer. Just snapped off a nice spitter. That's the curveball, 12-6, and it brings up Tanner Garrison with two down and nobody up. And the catcher puts one on the ground towards Drew Colbertson, who bobbles it, regathers, and does not have enough on the throw. Missouri's defense, I wouldn't say has been great this weekend, but it's been good enough, and they've made plays when they've needed it. 
It's a little bit of a sloppy one, sort of reminiscent of the uh, two Shelton errors on Friday that were not inexplicable because errors happen, but you couldn't point to a particular thing that made it happen. Feels like a play that Culbertson handles the vast majority of the time. Yeah, it looked like he was going to bunt, but takes a ball. Culbertson's been struggling offensively. I mean, the middle infield, really, with him and Garcia, have both really struggled to get off the schneid with the bats and SEC play. They're both known for the defense, and Garcia struggled out there yesterday. They're not getting quality defense out there. Those two guys are not bringing a whole lot of length. Yeah, considering his error on the drop pop-up and the additional miscue that probably should have been an error on the guy RBI single as it went down yesterday, Matt Garcia might have been the most thankful of anybody in black and gold in the dugout in the stands watching at home that uh, the Tigers did in fact pull out the win yesterday. So the hitter Jaywin Guy, the nine hole man at center field, is appearing at a college game. This is college game number 208, the former Liberty Flame who transferred over. It's pretty cool. Get to that number. You know, big league guys talk a lot about posting, and obviously it's a different deal doing it over 162 as opposed to, you know, maybe the 70-odd games that even a team like Florida that goes to Omaha so often is going to play. But it still makes a difference. And that is ball four. He will take his base, and there's two aboard. So the error continues the inning. It's making Bryce Mayer throw more pitches, and it is also now making Bryce Mayer base the top of the order in Cade Curley. It's actually one of the things. If I could pinpoint anything from being around pro ball, what makes what players value the most compared to fans it's durability consistency longevity those types of things it's not any particular stat I mean they love hitting lots of homers that and a lot of them are much better versed in in you know the OPS's and even more advanced stats of the world than fans would expect Curly but takes the first pitch and it's in there but uh, they really value guys who have the durability to, to post up as they say and play 155 160 plus games out of 162 and then who do it over a long time. There's, in some ways, not many bigger honors than getting to the 10 years of service time in the big leagues. Those guys have a ton of respect for that. Obviously, you know, however many All-Stars and Gold Gloves and Silver Sluggers and getting in the Hall of Fame, all of those things are, are glitzier and, and higher honors in an objective sense. But uh, those guys have a ton of respect. Only 20,000-odd guys have ever gotten to 10 years of big league service time. It's a big deal. Curl with Tarney on a 92-mile-an-hour fastball. So it's not only... Over 200 appearances overall for Guy. It's start number 193 in his college career. So Max Scherzer out there, a guy who's done his fair share of posting in his big league career and uh, hopefully will be back to it this year before too long. And when him and DeGrom come back, watch out for the Rangers rotation down the stretch. One, two, lifted out of play. So another uh, prominent former former Tiger whose number is not up out there, Kyle Gibson, uh, now back uh, in Missouri pitching for the Cardinals. Not going so well for him today. Gave up a six spot to the Marlins uh, in the top of the first. Maybe a few Gator fans watching that one on their second screen. Been a, been a tough start to the year for the Marlins too, right? Yeah, looking for their first win still today in St. Louis. Eric Perez out for the year. UCL tear too. That's pounded foul. 45 pitches already. For Bryce Mayer, and you think about how many pitches Jack Caglione threw in that first inning. Buckle up. It could be a long day. It could be a very high scoring affair come the end. Florida's one swing away from tying this right now. Curlin has six home runs this year. And it's a close take. It's two and two. It's every college baseball fan's dream, right? A, a Sunday finale when neither team has a whole lot left and uh Certainly Missouri doesn't have much left. Florida a little bit more, and both starters' pitch counts are climbing early. And Curley goes down swinging. Hernandez, the big base hit. Matt Garcia followed suit. They had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back two out base hits. So three in a row. That's more two out hits than Florida has all weekend. The Gators are two for 24 with two outs so far in this series is that's chested down by Heyman. Going to have to hurry Caglione over and in time. That's what you got to do at first, especially with Curtis running down. Hard hit, one hop, rocket at you. Just keep it in front of you. Yeah, sometimes that's uh, really all it takes. That short throw you know is coming. Luke Heyman kind of uh, going catcher mode, right? Like we saw yesterday. Just get something on it. 
Caglione does well here. It's good, good slide by Curtis to keep himself out of Caglione's path. Safe, uh, safer that way. What stood out to me there was Caglione's shoe was pretty much the entire width of the base. Not sure what size he's rocking these days, but man. Those are some big spikes. Six foot five, 250 pound lefty who can be touched over 100. I think hit 101 this fall. Jam shot there, ran a fastball all the way in on the hands of Jackson Beeman. Beeman walked and scored back in the four run first inning. This weekend, Mizzou has seven runs in the first. One has been playing from behind most of the time. Still have not led after an inning in this series. Eric Jackson, who just yesterday won his first SEC series, first year head coach for the Tigers. Even way out in front. He's looking to, in year one, do something that no head coach Mizzou has ever done. That is, take all three games in a weekend set against the Gators. I think he'd remind Tim Jamison of that fact. Even shoots one through the left side, face it. His first of the weekend, he's a fourth for the second time. I'd like to think that if uh, Mizzou does finish the job, that if uh, there's a post-game dinner tonight or something, that uh, Carrick Jackson would make sure Tim Jamison knows uh, it only took him one year to do something that Tim couldn't do in a few. To be fair, Tim didn't play Florida in weekend series until the last handful of years of his lengthy tenure here in Columbia. Tim looks like he's, he's getting a good amount of sun these days. Big hack there from Trevor Austin. You would never know it from looking at him. Or, or his tone sometimes. Tim Jamison is one of the funniest guys I've ever been around. We did a couple of games together, actually, uh, in 2018, the year uh, after he moved on from his head coaching role and was still in the athletics department before then having pitching coach jobs at Southern Illinois with a former assistant in Lance Rhodes and then Memphis with Carrick Jackson, of course, a former assistant of his. What was he like in the booth? Well, Let's just say his uh, sense of humor translates a little bit better off the air than on. Tough play. Lost it in the sun. Did land in Russell. Everybody's safe. The sun right above us. A cloudless sky. All the wind. It's going to be tough anything hitting the air today. We've seen that all weekend even without the sunshine. Yeah, Russell looked like he never really even saw this one. We talk about right field and the right side a lot because I think it's tougher with the wind. But the sun is tougher on the left side. Interesting, though, that Russell looked like he called it. Very emphatically calling off Colby Shelton. It's going to be a tough play always for Shelton, but usually when you're that sure of yourself, you got an idea where the baseball is. Yeah, so that flies in the face of the idea that he never saw it. I think certainly he did. And Jackson Lovich was just called for a strike for taking too long to get in the box. Just want to be clear, I, I didn't mean that Tim Jamison was, was boring on the air by <laughs> any stretch, just that he has a certain sense of humor that uh, is, is better for not being broadcast. I got you. Lovich gets into one. Pace it. Coming around third is Beeman. The throw is way offline, all the way to the backstop. Oh, this Florida defense, which has been so sure handed all season, is really shaky right now. That's a fourth error of the weekend for Florida, which matches the most they've had in a series this season. You, know, you like to say architects of their own demise, Max. I, I think uh, it's fair to say that in this inning at least, and really in the first in some ways, the Gators have been architects of their own demise, whether it's in the first inning walks and wild pitches, or in this inning the uh, Russell miscue in left field and then the errant throw. And that just feels like a guy trying to do too much, a young player trying to make up for that mistake earlier. Caden Pierre follow its suit. Well, I tried the other way that's down. Austin can walk on home. Lovitz right behind him. Tigers coming out with a fury. Max, I don't think anybody saw this coming. Even the most optimistic Missouri fans, I don't think would have told you that they had any remote chance of a sweep this weekend against the number six team in the country. And uh, Kevin O'Sullivan is back out of the Florida dugout. And You'd have looks, to imagine to make a pitching change. Yeah, he just motioned out towards the bullpen. So Jack Caglione, who had allowed just five earned runs in his last five outings combined. Didn't really get roughed up in the first. Didn't walk a batter either. 
Only one reach on an error was a race on a double play. He struck out three. And this could be two, his first pitch. This is efficiency, six to three. It goes, and that ends the threat. Three more runs for Mizzou. They lead 7-1 next week. They would be just three games above 500 on the campaign overall. And they have another date with Florida State coming up in two days. Unusual circumstance, too, for a pitcher who's probably frustrated at how his day went to be leading off the next inning after he's removed. He's in line for the loss right now. He's also 0 for 1 with a strikeout against Bryce Mayer. Second time through the order, already 50 pitches shown. Thrown by the righty. But two, almost got a swing on a pitch out in front of home plate. And that's the part where, again, as frustrated as Florida probably is, I would imagine the Missouri dugout, in particular Tim Jamison and Carrick Jackson, not remotely comfortable because even though they have a six-run lead, they they know they're going to have a lot of outs to piece together at the back end of this game. And the count fills up. Caglione is sitting on 55 career home runs. He's got 29 solo shots. It is time here with the Gators. Payoff inbound. And ball four. Four for the first time, his second walk in as many days. He was intentionally walked with two men on yesterday. So leadoff man on, now back-to-back -back hittings. The leadoff man was on four times for Florida yesterday, all in the early going, and he did not bring that leadoff man home in the first, the second, or the third in game two. Ty Evans has the best plate appearance of any Gator, maybe this weekend, his last time up as he swings through a heater. And Luke Heyman has two bombs, to be fair. Yeah, out, outside of those, but th those were quick. I just mean, right, like, right. lengthy, see a pitch. It was a 11 or 12 pitch walk his last time up. Heyman's had the best swings, no doubt, of anybody. At least consistently. Obviously, Caglione left the yard at 118, which is the fastest exit below homer I've ever seen in person. I don't know about you. It's amazing, too, that, that Florida has certainly had, up to this point, a weekend to forget. That could still change to some degree with the outs they have left today. But even as it stands, Caglione still has the highlight of the weekend. It's Ty Evans sends one right through the left side. First two are aboard. Might turn around second. Caglione will stay right there. First and second. Nobody out for the cleanup man. It's a little self-serving, Max, to say it now after he wraps a base hit through the left side. First hit of the weekend for Evans. But I do think when you have a plate appearance like that, it does so much to, to settle you. And it's not surprising to me at all that he would get back in the box looking a lot more comfortable than he had the last couple of days and would feel like he could put just a good solid swing, drop the bat on it, barrel it up, find a hole. Brings up Colby Shelton who struck out to end the first inning and he barrels what deep out to right field. Beeman going back, backpedaling at the wall and he runs out of room. Colby Shelton delivers a three-run homer. That cuts the deficit in half in a hurry. And that's exactly it, Max. This game is not remotely over, even though Missouri took a six-run lead after two innings because with the wind blowing out the way it is today, you can see home runs like that one. And it's not taking anything away from Colby Shelton, who did a good job to get his hands through and get as much of the barrel on it as he did. But you could tell by the way Jackson Beeman reacted to that. Similar to Kate Curlin when he was chasing the Garcia bloop back in the first inning, he thought no chance that ball was going to the wall, let alone over it. And uh, the the ball gets caught up in the wind today. It's just going to fly. Off the bat, you're thinking routine fly ball out, probably taking a couple steps back if you're Jackson Beeman, but this ballpark is a, a different beast, a different entity when the uh, the wind is going out for sure. As Heyman takes outside. So that changes the complexion of this game. It feels like in a hurry. So now you're just down by three. Still nobody out in this third inning already. Three runs home. Did not go on the appeal. Didn't look too close. Heyman's already homered in this game against Mayer. Caglion set the tone with the walk that Ty Evans gets his first base hit of the weekend and that Colby Shelton has also been struggling and gets another home run. His 14th of the year. Another look at it, driven in the air, and 
Didn't look like he was too sure it was going to leave the yard off the bat, but wind helped out. Beebe got turned around and then ran out of room anyway. Strike three call, front door. To... That's already six putt shots for Bryce Mayer. Yeah, the dynamic, if anything, has been a little bit more what we thought it would be for Mizzou pitchers, that the issue is not so much how many strikeouts can you rack up, it's that the even if they're rare mistakes, they can hurt you a lot because Florida can get into it. Obviously, just three homers over the first two games, not quite what we expected from the Gators, or I should say two homers over the first two games. But uh, two already today, and, and you wouldn't put it past him to hit at least one or two more in this game. Could be more than that with the way the wind is going. They have four homers. Mizzou homerless so far this weekend. Slowly rolled out towards Culbertson, who's already got an error today. This time, he keep the foot on the bag? Yes, he did. Nice stretch from Brock Daniels for out number two. We talked about it yesterday, that Brock Daniels, as compared to Jackson Lovich, who was Missouri's regular first baseman early in the season, is not a very big target by SEC first baseman standards. He's not a small guy, but he's not much bigger than the other infielders. So those stretches are a little bit more problematic for him. It's overall a good play by Culbertson, though, recovering from that error. Listen at 6'1", 195. Russell got under one. These have been tough all weekend. Garcia making the call. Backpedaling. He can't find it. Sprinting out of the box. Landon Russell ends up with second. It's a good hustle by Landon Russell, but really that's a play I think that you probably have to make from Garcia's standpoint because he has a little bit more time there. He's been out there. He knows this ballpark well enough to adjust. And right here, you know, when he gets his feet moving backward, he just has to be moving that way a little bit further. I think you have to know it's difficult, but you have to know as a center fielder, middle infielder here, if you're going out into shallow center, your initial read should be take an extra two steps beyond what you think and adjust from there. Light shot curling down the line and foul. Because it's always going to be much easier in that situation. Matt Garcia reads it and then runs to a spot, say, five or ten feet beyond where he thinks the ball's going to end up. It's always going to be easier to then pick your head up and work back in than it is to be backpedaling and reaching behind your head where you're going to lose sight of the ball because of where the bill of the cap is. And Pierre was surging in from contact. He's just playing a really deep center field right now with the wind and with Florida's power bats. Yeah, there's only so much the outfielders can do about it. Obviously, the, the easiest solution is just outfielders come in and take everything, but they can only cover so much ground. Tanner Garrison reached on a error by Drew Colbertson his first time up. Down on the count, nothing at two. And every out but two that Bryce Mayer has recorded so far have been via the K. They both come off the bat of Tyler Shumlin, too. Fly out to left, ground out to short. Did officially go as a double. By the way, for Landon Russell, his second extra base hit of the series. I'm sure he'll take it. It's an opportunity now for Florida with two outs. You know, we've, we've talked about Missouri scoring with two outs. At one point, eight straight runs between yesterday and the first inning today, all scored with two outs. The Gators could use some of that. Check swing. Yes, he did. Strike three. Oh, even all the way up here. It's quite the trek up to Columbia for these fans, but I think there's a lot of Florida fans throughout the country in general. Midwest is no exception. Purnell threw one pitch and got two outs to and the Mizzou threat in the second as Garcia goes the other way. 7-8-9 coming up for the Tigers. You feel like if Purnell can hang a zero right here, what is really right back in it. They have already matched their extra base hit total today from the last two games combined. Matched their home run total as well. Matt Garcia's got to be feeling maybe as good as he's felt all SEC play after he got the RBI knock in the first inning. Ended the 0 for 33 start. And he goes down swinging. Fernell's been a steadying force for Florida out of that bullpen. Really, the Gators relievers have pitched exceptionally well this weekend. And it's tough to put too much of anything that's happened in the first couple of, this, of these games on Florida's pitchers at all. Hayden Yost into the game in left field. Uh, he takes over for Landon Russell, who had that fortuitous double in the top of the inning, but uh, is lifted after two and a half. I think that's a combination of him 
missing the fly ball out in left field, and then also last inning, not only missing the cutoff man, but airmailing everybody and throwing it all the way to the backstop, too. So we talked about Pernell being a tough guy yesterday because of his arm slot, especially because he does not ever really flip the lineup over. Not a guy who's going to face guys multiple times generally. But now he's out there for a second time in as many days, facing these hitters again. Weekly roll to second. This should be three up, three down with four outs already for Pernell in just eight pitches. It's about as good as he can do it. I mean, what, it took Keglione 50 pitches, was it, to, to get four outs, and Pernell's done it in eight. And now just the nine batter, Brock Daniels, separating him from a clean bottom of the third. And that would get Florida right back into the dugout. Really right in this game, just down seven to four with uh, 18 outs still left at their disposal. When the weather's warm and the wind's blowing out of Taylor Stadium, you can expect football type scores. So that the game last year when Ole Miss was here. Calvin Harris had four home runs in the same game when the wind was doing. Pretty much what it's doing here this afternoon. Purnell versus Brock Daniels. And you can just tell the filth from the right-hander because that was an excuse me swaying in front of the count. Brock one for 12 so far in his SEC action. Choking up a couple inches already. He was choking up back on Tuesday. Down in the county at two strikes, just like this. Choking up just the same, and with this kind of win, he did send out his first home run. Down the right field line, then homered again the next day. So having a very solid week, one of the best of his career. And it fights that off. The lineup's going to turn over again for Florida in the top of the fourth inning. Curland and uh, Caglione will be scheduled second and third. Only had one score was half inning so far. It was Florida back in the top of the first. And Bryce Mayer struck out the side. Mayer's got seven Ks through three innings right now. The two in the dirt. In fact, we've had more runs in this game already through two and a half innings than we did the first two games combined in this series. Yeah, the script for Mizzou really to win this series, they had to keep the totals down. And that's exactly what they did the first two days. Feel like almost like a football underdog we talked about. They have to come in here and play kind of ugly to the eye games, it feels like, to win. Don't mean that necessarily negatively, but that's kind of what it looked like the last couple of days, low-scoring games. That's for a few. And a nice at-bat here, working for Brock Daniels, trying to get the Mizzou order back to the top of Jared Curtis, who's on deck. Daniels had to enter this week with one home run. He's tripled that total. And he shoots one to the opposite field, race it in, and immediately Yost was tested. Had to play it on a hop. Able to at least get enough of it. Knocked it down so Daniels doesn't get the second. But the inning continues. Every time you bring in somebody, it feels like especially in the outfield, and this series has been no exception. Going to get tested almost immediately. Well done by Daniels, though, because that's a, a good approach, I think, especially against any new reliever you're seeing for the first time, somebody who's got good stuff, but especially somebody coming from a weird release point. Just wait on it, let that ball get deep, use the big part of the field. He did it well. Looked like they had him. Oh, that was tight. Good move for Blake Burnell. It's the disadvantage of a uh, right-handed first baseman. If this is Caglione, who can just snap the glove down, they might have him. But it just takes longer for any right-handed first baseman to get the, the tag across his body and down. Still, Kevin O'Sullivan, it looks like, is going to use a challenge. I, Daniel's almost certainly out. Yeah, that's Anthony Rizzo style. Nice and easy, right? As Jarrett Curtis sends one out. Routine to center with Jalen Guy. Through three innings, it's a three-run game. Here in with his second home run already of the weekend. J.D. Hernandez has been great at the plate again. Seven runs in the first two innings. Mizzou's offense... It's generally been starting games real hot. They have cooled off down the stretch. The Florida bullpen has been really rock solid in this series. 
Kevin O'Sullivan hoping they can do so again today. It's time either Mizzou bats down the stretch. We're still not halfway home, though. It's only the fourth inning, 11 runs total. You know who's also been rock solid this weekend? Jalen Guy. Has been getting on base a whole lot down in this nine hole. He was on base three times yesterday. He was hit by a pitch. Walked at the infield single that scored a run with two outs. That's still one of just two two out base hits that Florida has. And I think that was in the air whether or not it was a single or an E4. And this time the appeal goes Florida's way. Two and two. That was well done by Guy. Strong wrists. Look clear from here. He didn't go. But the uh, entire Florida dugout still yelling no, 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 just in case any input was required from uh, first baseman, first base umpire Richard Riley, but certainly looked like an easy one. Guy flares one down the right field line. Beebe is over, had it played well. One up, one down. I think that's maybe the first instance in the entire game in which the wind has worked against the offensive team because not only did the wind keep that ball from tailing foul and probably out of the reach of Beeman. It also pushed it a little bit closer to him as opposed to and, and just significantly reduced the ground he would have to cover it. It pushed that ball deeper than it otherwise would have been and that played into Missouri's hands. Back to the top at Gabe Curlett. And he takes the first pitch smash ball strike. Mayor entered today in the array of 6-4-4. Just his fifth start and ninth appearance. He's been striking out a ton. He's been piling up the Ks. He's given up four runs. They've come on two swings. Solo shot and three-run blast from Heyman and Shelton, respectively. You mentioned the ERA, Max. The funny thing is, I think uh, if Mayer could even get through this inning, putting up a zero, let alone if he could get through one more, you could probably call this his best pitching performance of the season, even though his ERA would go up. On a day like today, it's about keeping your team in it and in this scenario with the lead. It's a tough day out there on the mound. Here we go. Here is racing in. Looks like he's got it. Loses the hat. Oh. Snow cone job at the last second. Not a fun day to be catching pop flies. Caden Fear, you can understand, like we talked about, outfielders are playing deep, so he's thinking off the bat, I got to get in, and he's busting to get in there. And then he realizes he overruns it about half a step and just hangs on. Yep, that's how it is today. He almost lost a whole minute, looked like. And Caglione rifles one into center, a two out base hit, just their third of the week yet. He's on for a second time in the last two innings and extends the inning for Ty Evans. And these are the trio of guys that did the damage in the third. Caglione walked, then Evans single, then Shelton Homer. Yeah, I think this could be, again, in the progression of Ty Evans this weekend, starting over 8, then working that great walk in the first hitting, smooth-looking single, and a run scored in the third. This would be a moment for him to get a little bit more into one. Maybe extra bases, something that would uh, would score Caglione. He's pacing 30 of the 31 games now. And Evans gets under one, but... The wind helping it deep out to center field. Pierre is going to have some room and throw. Team that entered with just 16 errors on the season. Top five in the country, a defensive fielding percentage in the skaters' defense. Max Tolman, Nate Cadder, glad to have you with us here on a Sunday. And Nate, it just feels like for Florida, nothing really has gone their way. The pitching from the starters has not been great it's been solid I mean Neely got through five innings on Friday it just didn't look pretty they stranded a small village did Mizzou offensively left 16 on base in the opener the offense maybe getting off the schneid a little bit but the defense continues to struggle that is something that's been very consistent for this Kevin O'Sullivan coach team this year yeah, and I think it's a big priority for him you can tell in in removing Landon Russell from the game after he had uh, the couple of mistakes in left field that he did back in the second inning. David may be fortunate a little bit there. It's two and two. Jackson's been on base twice already. A walk in the first, a single in the second. He has scored two of the Tigers' seven runs. Purnell and 
inning and two-thirds of shutout baseball so far. And now he gets the strike three call. He just looks totally calm. Exactly the kind of steadying force that Florida needs at this point with how things had been going the bottom halves of the first two innings. You know, we keep saying it, but there is so much time in this game, even if this were being played somewhere else. When this ballpark is a launching pad like it is today, the game's barely even started. Trevor Austin now, who has the exact same line as Beam at Ettrick today, did that hit him? Yes, it did. And Trevor Austin is plunked again. He gets hit more than any other Mizzou Tiger. He trots down to first base with just one out. I wonder if Mizzou could say, you know what, we're a little bit tired of being the, the scrappy small ball team here, especially on a day like today. Maybe it's worth it for some of these bigger bats in the middle of Carrick Jackson's lineup to try to ambush Purnell, to see what you can get on that first pitch. And, and if you could turn on it and hit one to straightaway left or closer to the line and get it up in the air, it's not hard to get it out today. Austin hit for the 12th time this year. Well, which is a guy who could certainly run into one. Right, he's slugging 625 this year, has six home runs, and a lot of them on days tougher to hit than this. Snap throw to first, close play. We ever had him with the tag, did Luke Heyman. Garrison, I mean, you saw that strike three call to Beeman. We saw him from the side angle. That's why it was a good addition. Why Tanner Garrison was the best guy framing pitches behind all plate last year in college baseball. Never afraid to move late. Late and quick leads to a lot of success when you're framing pitches behind. The plate, here's a weak chopper right back to Purnell. Blocks the throw to second. And still able to hit Lovich, who just stumbled, but looks to be A-OK. -okay. Two down. That's a good decision by Purnell. I don't know if there was a miscommunication here or if Shelton and Curlin hadn't talked before the pitch on who was going to cover second base, but Purnell just wasn't comfortable with what he was seeing, the traffic out at second here, because initially it looked like Curlin was going to go cover, then Shelton was making the play, and in the end, Purnell made the wise decision, because even if he made an accurate throw there, that's going to be tricky for Shelton having to catch the baseball and find the bag with his foot. Just take the out. And in his line of sight for a righty, when he's turning, the first person he sees is Cade Kerwin, who's in line with second base, but he's way behind it. So, And you know somebody like Purnell, it's just natural if you have that unusual arm slot when you're pitching, it's just more difficult to throw to bases. The last thing he needs is a lot of eye traffic going on and not feeling comfortable. That's a recipe for disaster. Just, just take the out at first base. Obviously, Florida would much rather have a runner at first here than at second with two outs, especially with how Missouri has come up with two out hits with runners in scoring position the last couple of days, but better than having first and second and one out. Missouri's four for six with two outs so far today as Peer fouls one away. Also four for six with men in scoring position. Mizzou has certainly been the clutcher of these two teams this weekend. With two down, with men in scoring position. Mizzou scored four in the first inning, three in the second. They were held off the board by Purnell last inning. That's launched the other way. So Purnell has now hit 30 pitches. Caglion through 50, so 80 pitches already, not yet through the fourth. Purnell threw just 26, though, yesterday in his two innings of work. They do have some bullpen action, though. 2-2. Two -two. Very late defensive swing. That fan thought it was coming right at him. Got the net right in front of him. He's letting this guy know, hey, comes that my, my way again. I, I had it. I got you. Two balls, two strikes, and two down. Mizzou line at 1.7-1. to And Slater, we have not yet seen this weekend, is the man down in that Gators bullpen. Richard Jr. from Palm Harbor, Florida. Might see him come out in the fifth. Brunel's got to get through the fourth, though, first. He's got Pierre right now. The count is full. On deck is J.D.R. Hernandez. 
He's already had a two-run double back in the first inning, his first time up. And the last thing Florida wants right now is to have to deal with Hernandez with two on and two out. It's a big pitch here for Purnell. Gutsy performance already. Pierce shoots one right back up the middle. Another two out RBI base hit. The Tigers two out one on situation. He'll work from the stretch against J.D. Hernandez. It could be one pitch, one out, just like we saw from Purnell. Shelnut takes his time, throw right to the chest of Luke Haven, and that will retire the side. One pitch, one out, Mizzou gets a run back. Coach Carrick Jackson, and Coach, what have you seen, the, the clutchness from your offense so far this afternoon? Yeah, we're just, uh, as we've talked about the last couple days, our guys are really starting to understand what it means to trust their plans. Um, and they're staying in their plans, and they're forcing these guys to beat them within their plans, and they're seeing that if they do that, they're opportunity for success increases tremendously. Coach uh, Ian Losey coming on here for the fifth inning in place of Bryce Mayer. How much length do you need to get from him? And, and after him, how much of a patchwork job is it going to be to try to piece together these last 15 outs? Well, we, we got some guys in place, and we're playing one inning at a time. And he's going to come out, and he's going to give us some zeros. And when we need to go to the next guy, we'll go to the next guy that will come out and give us some zeros. But as you mentioned, coming in, it's an offensive day. So um, we, we can't be satisfied with any lead. we got to keep pushing runs across and um, knowing that, you know, guy may get a fly ball that on a normal day would be a routine out but today may not be the case with all the pitchers you had to use the last couple of days and, and Bryce having pitched earlier in this week already how clutch was it for him to go out there not only work four innings but just the raw stuff seven strikeouts for him today yeah no that was pretty good um, and, and I lend to say that him being um, a little fatigued may have actually helped him um, so um, you know he's a guy that has a good three pitch mix and he's able to throw those pitches for strikes in any count so he was very effective today Coach, just one more quick one. Obviously, not a lot of teams have had the success against Jack Caglione that, that you guys did in his inning at a third today. What about the approach do you think was so effective? Uh, again, just telling our guys to stay in their plans. Um, we knew what he was going to try to do. We also knew that if we were patient, um, he would spray it a little bit. And when he put something in the zone, you'd have an opportunity. So that's what they were able to do. Coach, thanks so much. Good luck going for the sweep the rest of the way. Appreciate you, MIZ. Ian Losey, who we saw out there on this mound earlier this week as well. He's facing Colby Shelton first. It's the middle three guys in this Gators lineup. Lefty from down the road at St. Louis. He was a guy you certainly had pegged as somebody who would pitch today for Mizzou given their lack of arms. And he comes out of the shoot with a strikeout just like Bryce Mayer did back in the first. You know, the numbers in particular in SEC play for Losey have not been this year what we had seen from him at times in the past. But I, I think last season, outside maybe of Tony Newbeck, it, for the limited portion of the year that, that he was healthy before needing his, his Tommy John surgery, I think Ian Losey has been the guy really the last three years that former Missouri head coach Steve Beezer trusted more than anybody, certainly out of his Tigers bullpen. So not a bad option to have here. And a guy who can give you some length started six games last year. It's an awkward swing this time from Luke Heyman. Mizzou up by four, so low seed we saw against UT Martin. Worked the last two innings. Not allow a run, so pitching well right now. He's been staked out to a four-run lead. There's a big hat from Heyman. He did the same thing a couple of weeks ago where he pitched in the midweek Missouri loss to Kansas and then came back to throw against Kentucky. Over the weekend, he threw 24 pitches against Kansas, then 28 against Kentucky. This week, 26 against UT Martin. So I think back-to-back yeah! -back strikeouts. Breaking ball, slowed it down. Probably somewhere in that range is realistic for him in this game. 20 to 30 pitches is probably where you'd expect him to be. Uh, he's been uh, about as efficient as you can be so far through these uh, first couple of batters. And, just too many strikeouts for Florida. Not enough consistent contact, especially on a day like today. Get the ball up in the air. You got a chance. That's funny because the last couple of days we were talking about, especially for Mizzou offensively, just put the ball on the ground, get it in play because Mizzou was taking a whole lot of swings, especially late on Friday night where they were trying to end the game with one hack, and that's kind of going against the grain from their usual approach and the process they like. But today, anything in the air, if it's not leaving the park, it's been very difficult for anybody to stay with it and catch it on a fly. Pop-ups to the shallow outfield have more often than not, it feels like, wound up with the guy at second base. 
It's a strike Losey would have liked to have there on 0-1 with the immaculate inning uh, just a couple of strikes away at that point. And now he's falling behind. Thomas Shelnut, 2-0. 2-1, two rather. Shelnut, a ground out and a fly out so far. Have not had a three-up, three-down inning for either team today. That'll change if Losey could get Shelnut here. Sharply hit, backhanded off the glove, not handled cleanly by Austin. And it won't be the first three up, three down inning of the day. Instead, here comes Landon Russell, and it continues. Well, he's going to be hitting Yo since he came on uh, for Russell in the uh, top of the, or rather bottom of the third inning defensively. So Yost is going to be getting his first at bat. Obviously, Yost is not somebody you worry about from a power standpoint compared to some of the big names in this Florida lineup, but nonetheless, of all days, this is the kind of day you cannot afford two out rallies because a guy on first base is borderline scoring position. Yo squares to butt, drops it down. Losey going to have to spin and hurry, and the throw is right into Yost's back. That'll allow Shelnut to go all the way first to third. 19. Missouri is challenging the play at first base for potential runners lane interference. Previous plays under review. And I think they have a good claim here, Max, you know, referencing that World Series between the Nationals and the Astros back in 19 when you had a, a sort of even more controversial instance. Ordinarily, you get those three feet on either side of the baseline if you were somewhere else on the diamond. But running down to first base, you don't have to be in the runner's lane to be legal but you have to be in the runner's lane in order to protect yourself if something like this happens. Essentially, the risk of interference, the jeopardy of interference is on the runner if he's not in the running lane, and clearly there, Yost is outside the runner's lane. So I think he's at some risk here, even though coaches often teach to do exactly that. Video review has made it more difficult to get away with. This is a call that rarely is gonna be made in real time on the field, but video review, it's you see it a lot more often. Can I bring up something else? He completely whiffed the base first time through. I mean, he got back there, but... After review, the runner was not running legally. Therefore, he is out for interference. On a weekend that has... On a weekend that has not Missouri gone every day in this series for Garrett Jackson's team, but... Today has been a different tale. All three of them with one base hit so far. Garcia got his first knock of the weekend back in the first inning, the blue RBI single. That came with two down. Ryan Slater back out there for his first full inning of work after he came in and got a J.D. Hernandez one pitch ground out to complete the fourth inning. And now all of a sudden in these middle innings, offense has been hard to come by. We had four total runs in the first, four in the second, three in the third, and just one since. Garcia hitting just one, 60 as the leadoff man in innings this year. And there's the first putt shot of the afternoon for Ryan Slater. Not an easy job. I've, I've always thought as a reliever to have to come in when your team is losing. It's not there's something less motivating about maintaining a deficit than maintaining a lead, or at least one that feels like you're inheriting a lot of downside and not as much upside. But it's an important job. Again, we don't want to belabor the weather any more than we have as Culbertson gets the bunt down. Back to the mound, Slater, nice and easy. But obviously, it's his job to buy the Gators as much time as he possibly can, as much opportunity as he possibly can, and they still have 12 outs left. It's starting to get a little bit short, but certainly this is still well within Florida's reach. And you can see Garrett Jackson immediately pull it through Colbert to the side. Freshman, the youngster, just trying to drop down a bunt for a hit. Daniels, that iron hole man. Jarrett Curtis on deck. Just 
Slater dealing quickly. It's right over our heads. Took him just seven pitches to get the first three outs. The 8-9-1 for Florida coming up next inning. This Florida bullpen, again, has been uh, close to impeccable in this series. That remains true right here as it's a three-up, three-down inning for Ryan Slater. Here's now in his second season calling Florida sports. There he is, and uh, back in Columbia where he has a connection. Came to Como after graduating from Southern Illinois Carbondale. He was the voice of Mizzou baseball, in fact, from 1998 to 2002 as the sports director over at KFRU here in town. He did pre and post game for uh, Mizzou football and, and basketball on the Tiger Radio Network before heading down to New Orleans to Tulane and New Orleans Pelicans, ESPN, and uh, now in year two since taking over for the legend Mick Hubert. Great to have Sean back in town. He said he hadn't been back until coming with Florida football uh, for his first game here in Columbia as the voice of the Gators. Been uh, some 20 years and a lot of change in that time. But welcome back to Sean. Uh, just a great guy uh, to be around, and, and we're lucky to have him here in the SEC. Two balls and no strikes. And now it's 3-0. It's been nice to have the booth right next to him. He made it sound like when he turned around the corner here with Gators football for the first time, everything just looks so different. Taylor Stadium has been around for a long time. Yeah, that hasn't changed a whole lot. Some of the some of the baseball facilities, the McCarter baseball facility down the left field line that has the clubhouse and the batting cages and such, the indoor areas for the team, that's all new since uh, Sean Kelly was here calling Tigers baseball. But uh, the bones of the stadium, if you will, have not changed a whole lot at that time. Fresh paint job on the uh, upper level towards the press area. Fresh coat of paint. It all counts. We're up there Max. somewhere. It all counts. Leadoff man on for Florida for the third time today. Brings up the 9 0 hitter, Jalen Guy. Florida's got 12 outs to work with, trailing by four. They've trailed since they gave up that four spot in the first inning. Jack Caglione just did not have it today. Lasted just an inning and a third. Now Torrance beam it in right field. These have been difficult all day. And a couple of late, firm steps there that makes the grab. Again, though, off the bat, you just you don't see that ball going anywhere near that far. That's a 340-foot fly out into right center field. It's amazing how the ball carries on these types of days at Taylor Stadium. Losi with a good recovery, because I was going to say the last thing you want to do against the guy who's certainly a glove first catcher in the eight hole in Garrison is walk him on four pitches to start an inning. Still work to do against the top of the Gators lineup, but that's one step toward a solution for Losi, the fly out. Hernandez had to shoot out of his crouch there. It's back to Kate Curlin, who's 0 for 3 today. Punched out a couple of times against the starter, Bryce Mayer. Piled up seven of them in just four innings. And a jam shot out of play. Losey came in in the fifth, struck out the first two batters he faced, then the error at third by Trevor Austin continued the inning. And then the bunt back to him, spun through it into the back of Hayden Yost. They looked at it after Carrick Jackson challenged, said runners interference on Yost, and that's how the last inning came to a conclusion. Huge spot here for everybody involved. So if Kerwin can get on, up steps Jack Caglione. It would be an opportunity to potentially pull his team within one run with a big swing. In the air, will it stay in play? Wind probably helping it stay in. Hernandez finds it on the warning track. You made the point, Max, while the ball was, was in the air. I was thinking the same thing. It's another instance of the wind helping the defense, giving Hernandez a chance at this. Ordinarily, I don't think this stays in play. And Hernandez did really well, because I don't think he saw that for a while. And he was able to get over. That's never easy, especially with the catcher's mate. You don't want to be lunging like that. Really important to have the second hand up there. And, and we couldn't really tell on that replay. There's a chance he caught that as much with his bare hand as he did with his mitt. 
Aglion hammers one out to right field. Forget it. Home run number 16 out in the blink of an eye. Third home run of the day for the Gators, second of the series for Jack Caglione. You can understand, Max, that Caglione must have been awfully disappointed, frustrated at how his start went on the mound. But it shows you the maturation process of that guy mentally over his time in Gainesville, that he's able to put that out of his head, put together some good at-bats since he was removed from the game. Base hit, and now a rocket of a line drive homer out to right that pulls Florida within two runs. And they still have 10 outs left. 109 off the bat. Mentioned as well the leadoff four pitch walk to Garrison. And even though Losi did well then against Guy and Kurland, leadoff walks just so often hurt. Otherwise, Caglione would have had to lead off the seventh inning with nobody on base. You felt like coming into today watching batting practice, knowing it's in the 70s, knowing the wind's going out. We were going to see some homers, and Florida was going to get into a few. They've homered in three of the last five innings, but they still find themselves trailing by two. Now three homers today. Now five on the weekend for the Gators. And uh, Missouri still yet to leave the ballpark. Missouri's only hit one ball that's even touched the wall, I think, the Hernandez double off the base of the fence on Friday, which certainly would have been a home run had he hit it today, probably even yesterday. Strong take, just in off the plate at 91. Evans up to Ty Evans, who's had himself a nice afternoon, walked in the first, singled and scored in the third. But Caglione's walked, singled, and homered today now. He's driven in a couple. He's also scored twice. Didn't have it on the mound, but he's looked himself at the dish. Patient approach here this inning from Florida. As the dugout wanted that call, but the count is full. Walk here would put the tying run coming up to the plate in the form of Colby Shelton, who did homer earlier. Huge pitch coming from Ian Losey. It's 3 2. Swing and a miss. He got him. Top of the Tigers order is Jarek Curtis, who's 0 for 3 today, takes a strike. Jack Caglione has made this a ball game. Five of the last six runs have been scored by the Gators. Ryan Slater and this Gators bullpen have looked very good again today. Slater, four up, four down so far. First time facing Curtis. Beaming on deck, Hosted in the hole. Lord has thrown some haymakers today. Solo shot in the second, three run homer in the third, two run homer in the sixth inning. They've only scored one run in this series that did not come home via the long ball. Just the infield RBI single yesterday with two down as Curtis goes fishing. Strikeout number three through five batters for Ryan Slater. Curtis looks a little dejected, kind of dragging his bat with him back to the dugout. Certainly have been some two-strike chases from Missouri hitters in this series. Curtis came in with a four-game hitting streak. Might have another opportunity or two to try to extend that as Jackson Beeman takes a strike. Feels like Florida's really finding its footing, though. First pitch strike every time. Ryan Slater wasted no time. He's pouring him in right now. Gators have scored five of the last six runs since Mizzou took that 7-1 lead through two innings. And Slater, again, doing exactly what you have to do. Just keep Missouri where they are. Give your very capable offense a chance. And we saw how quickly Florida can cut into or erase deficits. Jack Caglione's going to bat at least one more time in this game. 1-2 on its way. Oh, went outside. It doesn't have to be Caglione, though. We've seen home runs from Shelton and Heyman. 
in this game already. Heyman second of the weekend along with Caglione's. And those are the first two guys coming up when we hit the seventh inning. We have plenty of time left, but Florida still got nine outs to work with offensively. Missouri trying to answer this two spot, though, on the floor to just hung at the top of this inning. Payoff coming. And Beeman swung right over the top of it. Missouri has no answer for the slider right now. But again, that's the key to any slider success is, is getting those first pitch strikes, being able to locate the fastball early in counts, and forcing hitters to be accountable to it. You know, with Brandon Neely on Friday, Florida starter, he just wasn't able to locate his off-speed stuff consistently enough, so Missouri really only had to worry about the fastball. With Caglione, it was the fastball that was causing problems earlier today as now Slater 7-for-7. Seven seven. The changeup looked really good for Caglione, but if you don't have the fastball for a strike, it just doesn't force hitters to honor both. Everything's great for Caglione when it's playing off of the fastball, like is the case with so many hard-throwing pitchers. And so seven for seven, it was a fastball. Kind of expected a veteran like Austin to be looking for a first pitch strike. It's also worth noting, I think, uh, that although the radar gun here at Taylor Stadium can be at times uh, a little bit untrustworthy, shall we say, and uh, also the wind is blowing pretty hard in the pitcher's face today, Caglione's velocity was was not up where we're used to seeing. It was more in the, in the low to mid-90s rather than... Uh, Touch it up in that 97 98 range. Austin hits one well out towards the alley at right center field. Evans give it chase, lays out, and he's got it. Play of the day defensively for either. Lorentz coming via the long ball today, and now down by just a pair. Losey's still out there. Bids one in for a strike. Colby Shelton, the batter. Three run shot back in the third inning. That came when Mizzou was up by six. It was a 7-1 score at that point. Florida's bullpen has looked very strong since then, though, and the bats have started to bust out, but Shelton now in danger of maybe striking out for a third time. The home run right between a couple of swinging strikeouts. He was the first batter. Losey faced back in the fifth, and he got him. This time he hits what sharply right past the dive of the first base, but it kicks off Garcia for a single wide turnaround first. That's a play. Losey was right behind him. They had to throw, but second base hit of the day for Colby Shelton. Blasted it right through the ship. I think both Daniels and then certainly Garcia get some piece of this. But for Florida, it's all about getting that leadoff man on. Especially in front of Heyman, who has the two homers already in this series, though since his second inning solo shot today, he has struck out twice. Swing away from tying it. Coyotes homer twice in this series, and he just got hit right on the backside. Now the tying run is aboard. Go ahead run comes to the plate. Just like that. Barely into the seventh inning. This, uh, in my mind, if I were a Missouri fan, would have the alarm bells not just ringing, but full-on donging, you know, like the, the church bells uh, in the middle of the day. Jacob beating up for Missouri, and, and I would think this could be Losey's very last batter. Tyler Shelna takes wide of the play. 0 for 3 today, but Tyler Shelna entered today. As after just one pitch home, we got a meeting in the minds. But Shelton's been on base at 17 straight games. He has not reached today, though. Did reach me in the error, but that does not count for the on base streak. We just saw that come into play with the uh, Angels at the big league level. I'm really surprised, to be honest with you, Max, that, that Ian Losi is being allowed to face Shelton. There is a lefty on deck in Yost, but no disrespect to him. I don't think he scares you, certainly from a home run standpoint, nearly as much as Shellnut does. My priority would be having the best guy in to face Shellnut, and, and I don't know right now that Losey is the best option for that, especially now having gone to 33 pitches after he threw on Wednesday. Strong bounce back after the visit. Yost is on deck. Yost replaced Russell earlier. Russell the righty, Yost the lefty, the other guy they would 
Think about pinch hitting, you think generally one of the outfielders is another lefty in Robertson. Right now, it just feels like Ian Losey could be in a world of trouble. Up by two. First two guys aboard in the seventh inning. Florida has had a knack for late inning rallies. They've trailed in every SEC game they have played so far this year. All 12 now, and they're 6 and 5 in the first 11. And now you're really behind. A ball here would load the bases with nobody out for Yost. It would probably mean a new guy coming in, and you'd potentially bring Pete in with the bags packed and nobody out. That'd be really tough. Light shot down the line, fair ball. All the way to the wall. Shelton scores. Abe is going to get the stop sign, and it's a one-run game. For me, Max, just one too many batters, maybe a couple too many batters. Wouldn't have been easy to tell coming into this inning that Ian Losey didn't have a lot left. I think based on how those first two batters went, it, it was more obvious. In this at bat, you could see the arm side misses, which is always an indicator of a pitcher who's tiring. His release point starting to get a little inconsistent. That one, unfortunately for Losey, was in the strike zone. Would have been better off missing with it. And uh, now after the RBI double by Shellnut, Florida is a run away from tying the game. Then why was he up in the first place? Thomas up there, tying run at third, go ahead, run at second. Still nobody out in the seventh. And very late on the first pitch breaking ball. What a moment for Dale Thomas. On the way, he has struggled mightily swinging the bat this year as a senior. Have to think this would mean so much to him. He hasn't had a hit since March 23rd, game two against LSU. Confident tank there. Thomas didn't play yesterday, was 0 for 4 with a pair of strikeouts on Friday. Chops one out to Losey, who fields it nicely, spins, flips to first, and no advancement from either runner. Heyman thought about it. He was pretty far off the bag at third, but a nice play here from Losey. You can tell a few steps hard off. I think if he goes immediately, he's going to get there with how high that first bounce is. They play it safe with nobody out, though. Now you got one down, runner still at second and third. Yeah, I think that decision makes sense in that instance for Heyman to hold up, but it is interesting. Dale Thomas, he got the ground out. Nobody scored. And now he's made the call to pitcher number three of the day in Pete. And his first pitch got away from him. Bags are packed for Jalen Guy. Second hit batter of the inning. And as a second time, they've put Tanner Garrison on base for free. Four pitch walk in the sixth. And now he's hit by a pitch in the seventh. He hasn't had to even consider swinging the bat. His last couple of plate appearances. And frankly, as good as Garrison is defensively, he's probably the guy Missouri would most like to deal with in this Florida lineup. There aren't a lot of good choices, so that's not selling Garrison especially short. But the way Jalen Gaia swung the bat, I don't know that the nine hole is a, is a very good option as compared to the eight. And now they're going to have nowhere to put him with the bases loaded. And obviously, just about the worst introduction for Pete into a game. He's got to find a way to settle himself immediately and make good pitches here to Jalen Guy, who it seems has seen the ball really well as this series has gone on. And has a, a walk and a couple of flyouts in this game. Looks like we're quickly potentially getting, looks like some action stirring down in that dugout. Not sure they're gonna stay with Jalen Guy here. We might get Robertson coming out of the dugout. Interesting. So a late move here. And they bring in Armando Albert. Senior, he also came in back in the game on Friday, had one AB grounded out to short. And going to a guy who only has six hits as a Gator this year, hasn't had one since March the 8th against St. Mary's. That was a double off the bench, and he also stole the base in that game, but it's been a while. Bases loaded, one out in the seventh. Comes in off the bench and takes a ball. Huge batter is Albert because you got Curlin and then Caglione looming. Mizzou led this game 7-1 to one after the second inning. It's 8-7 now. And that's nowhere close, and it's three straight balls from Pete. Albert is 0 for his last 12. 
over the last month, though he does have two walks and has been hit by a couple of pitches in that span. And it's got to be a straight take now. This is, as a Missouri fan, what you were worrying about, even up 7-1, to one, is how are the Tigers going to piece together the late outs in this game? Heenan has not thrown a strike yet. And there's his first. At the same time, Beaton has to be thinking, just keep it in the strike zone, force Albert to beat you. It might seem unlikely, but he's also one pitch away from getting out of the inning if everything goes perfectly. Albert lays off, ball four, we're tied at eight. You know, Max, we talked about the free bases and how much they've hurt Florida. All those walks and hit batsmen in particular in the first game of the series, all the wild pitches. It feels like the free bases have hurt Missouri just as much or more, certainly since the first inning in this game. A couple of errors, the defense has looked a, a lot shakier, and now they've just uh, tied the game for free, and it's not getting any easier. Third free pass of the inning. Two hit batsmen, that was the first walk. And now a first pitch strike to Kate Curlin, who is 0 for 4 so far today. Fly out, pop out, two strikeouts. 21 RBI so far. Florida has not had the lead yet today. Defensively, pretty straight up, very deep in the outfield, as you would expect, with the win. Six home runs for the man at the plate so far this year. And a heck of a stop there from J.D. Hernandez. That keeps it all tied. You make the point, Max, about the depth of the outfield. There's really nowhere else for them to play, considering the wind and the power that Curland has. But Curland's thought process has to be just get something with a little bit behind it up in the air. Let the wind take it out to some depth. Curland was the hero last week on Friday in the opener versus Mississippi State. Had the walk-off single back up the middle. Came on a pitch with two strikes. Had a chance to put the Gators out in front. Peden's one, two. Cut on and missed. Huge first out, or first strikeout, I should say, for Jacob Peden. This is a monster out, and more importantly, a monster second out in the inning. The slider stays up, really. It's not what you'd call a nasty pitch, but it's just a little tricky to deal with for Curlin. Maybe goes slightly out of the zone, but now it's the biggest at bat of the weekend. Jack Caglione, eighth hitter of the inning. But of course, the reason that second out is so big, Max, is that now Florida can't score Shellnut from third base to take the lead with an out, and it just frees a lot up for Missouri defensively. Great bounce back pitch there. It's all even, a ball and a strike. I get Caglione has the two homers this weekend and 49 the last two years, but if he could bunt something anywhere on the third base side, it's almost a free run for Florida right now because Missouri's gone into the overshift and has Austin deep. <laughs> Normally, I would scoff at that. This is late enough in the game. I, I think taking the lead is, is enough of a priority. You'd think about it, but can understand why nobody wants to see Caglione do anything but swing it. Yeah, hitting 394, one of the best batters in the country right now. And a 2 1 is fisted in the air, shallow left field. Curtis racing in and makes the catch. Doom did pinch hit. He's out there at third as Jackson Lovich takes a vicious hack to begin the year. There's Del Thomas at third. He's going to hit in the seven spot because he pinch hit for Yost. And Robertson will take over the nine slot in the order. Same result there for Jackson Lovich. Drove in a run with a single in the second, scored that frame as well. Mizzou's offense is really a bit slowed down by Ryan Slater. Slater is still out there. 30th pitch of his outing. Obviously, every inning is big at this stage, but, but this bottom of the seventh followed by top of the eighth feels especially important because it's 4-5-6 for Missouri, then 3-4-5 for Florida. Swing and a miss. He got him. Boy, Ryan Slater has been absolutely money. He has gotten eight outs, five via the strikeout. 
Yeah, that's eight in a row retired by Slater since he came on after the Caden Peer RBI signal. That slider with two strikes has been lethal. And now he deals with Peer, who had the RBI knock off of Purnell that got Slater into the game in the first place, and he has been absolutely flawless. This is the one man he had yet to face, and Pierce having his best game so far in SEC play of his freshman campaign. Couple of hits, three RBIs, and a run score. Mizzou won the first game of this series Friday night in walk-off fashion in the 11th inning. As Pierre Fiewel not after he fouled it off, it looked like his front calf. One run victory last night for three for the Tigers. Trying to sweep Florida for the first time ever. What two, a little half swing down the third baseline. Tough play for Thomas who just came in and he can't handle. We'll see what the official scoring is on that. I would think a hit, Max. Certainly that's how it would go for me. Tough play for Thomas leaving his feet. Even if he gloves it, it's going to be a long throw. And Pierre runs pretty well. It does indeed go as a hit. And you said it right. Just a, a kind of half three-quarter swing for Pierre to put something in play. And this has to be clean for Thomas. It's not just off the heel of his glove. And it gives Mizzou a one-out base runner. Most confident guy with a stick in his hand for the Tigers this year, especially of late. Inside out, Hack. Hack Garcia on deck through Culbertson is in the hole. They shade Hernandez to the pole side, so massive hole on the right side of the infield. You can see the deep breaths. As emotional as he can get, he can be very even keel too. Can keep the heart rate down in big moments. Mm. Slater wanted that one. That was tight. That infield single, the first hit that Slater allowed today, and it was a weak little roller to third. Now Hernandez rolls one right back up the middle, and it's all the way through. Pierce showcasing the afterburners, even despite the ankle. It's all the way to third. Sometimes, Max, it's just about hitting them where they ain't. J.D. Hernandez has done that this weekend. Five hits now in the three games. Doesn't hit this one especially hard, and Florida's doing the right thing in shading him up the middle with the second baseman, Curlin, but just doesn't quite have the legs to get there with the ball on the opposite side of the bag from him, and Kevin O'Sullivan now out of the Florida dugout, and he's going to make another move to the Gators' bullpen for their fourth hurdler today. That's a tough one for Kate Curlin because he, he got there and looked like he slid. If he dives and just knocks that down, it's first and second. Matt Garcia, who has struck out each of his last two trips up. He's got an RBI. Single today, you know. check on J.D. Now Hernandez obviously doesn't have great speed over at first base, but this is a situation where you'd have to think everything, every instinct in Carrick Jackson's mind is screaming, put some play on. Hernandez was in motion there, a little bit late on the jump, but foul back to the screen, 0-1-1. Garcia, while he's hitting 221, is batting 417 with runners in scoring position. See Hernandez checking the sheet there, trying to see what is in motion. Especially with good speed at third and Pierre and Thomas playing a couple of steps back of the bag, I, I bunt wouldn't surprise me either. And that's just foul. And now you're Kane Fisher. This is your guy to go get. Yeah, Garcia's thought process has to be just find a way to put it in play. He runs pretty well. Wouldn't be an easy double play ball to turn and that's how Florida is playing it at the moment just have to find a way to put it in play Fisher's looking for the K mm. oh boy that's a tough take oh two to me that says fooled most likely because I think if Garcia was was ready for that pitch that's way too close to take lives to see another pitch 
And the count evened up. You got the veteran Garcia with the bat in his hand. You got the freshman on deck and Drew Culbertson. Wonder if Missouri would consider putting Hernandez on the move here, anticipating off speed. There he goes. It's popped in the air behind first. Curlin racing back, coming in is Evans. Evans will make the grab. And there's two down. Everybody has to stay put. Always nervy on pop-ups between outfielders and infielders, especially today. Already seen a few fall, but Evans was sprinting in from contact there. Makes the grab, and now you're one out away from getting through this seventh unscathed. In this instance, especially now that a double play ball doesn't matter, if I were Missouri, I'd actually not want to move Hernandez because there's a big hole on the right side of the infield for Culbertson right now. One for 11 in this series. He's grounded out each of his last two times up. What a massive position he is in right now. The heart's got to be pumping as he's facing the lefty Cade Fisher. Flips one the other way, but that's going to tail foul. To me, the swings Culbertson has taken, I haven't seen a lot of reason to think he's catching up to the Gators' velocity, so I'm really surprised by how far up the middle the second baseman, Curland, is playing. And I think I'd be tempted to move Heyman maybe just a step off the line as well, where he's still honoring Hernandez but not holding him proper. Because to me, if Culbertson does find a way to get a hit here, it's screaming soft ground ball through the right side, which would just be death by yet another cut for Florida, the way it's gone with Missouri's soft contact, two out RBIs today. Two infield singles so far in this seventh inning. And Colbertson chops one over to Thomas. Inning over. Massive for Florida. Kate Fisher comes in with men at the corners and what is going on in the second half now on ESPN and ABC. But we are not going to tell you the score because our camera ops are recording the game and uh, they can hear everything we say. And uh, they asked that, that we not say the score of the game. Annie specifically asked for it that, that the score of the game not be said over the headset so that they can uh, enjoy it when they get home. But if you are looking for it, it's on ESPN and ABC. We have some power. We have some leverage right here because you and we I do. know the score. They do not. They do not want to know the score. Yeah, I told them maybe we could start the shakedown process around <laughs> this stage. You know, five bucks ahead, ten bucks ahead if you don't want to hear the score. It's funny because they just handed us the live scores. Popped in the air. Who wants it right side? Daniels fighting the sun. And he's not going to make the play. And the layout leadoff man is on in the form of Ty Evans. Again, there's only so much to be said in these situations, Max. Obviously, at the SEC level, you'd never expect to see an infield pop-up drop. On the other hand, obviously, the wind is an unusually significant challenge today. All I can say is maybe this is a situation where you'd like to see Matt Garcia, the second baseman who has more experience in college baseball and in this ballpark, call off Brock Daniels. But it's going to be a tough play for whoever's underneath it, and Missouri has not done well enough on those. As Colby Shelton sends one out deep towards left center field on its way and out of here. Colby Shelton's second home run of the afternoon. Florida takes their first lead of the ball game. And this is what Florida did not do in the first couple games of this series and has done so well today, which is make Missouri pay for mistakes. The Tigers have made a couple of errors. They've walked some guys, and they've made two or three more significant defensive mistakes that have not gone as errors. Again, you have sympathy for Brock Daniels in that instance and every other guy for Mizzou and for Florida who has struggled on balls in the air today. It is really difficult when it is this bright and this windy. But those are plays that if you want to sweep a top 10 team and sweep Florida for the first time in school history, Missouri has to make. And a ton of credit belongs to the Gators and the Colby Sheltons of the world who did not get off to the great starts that they would have expected in this series. The offense was struggling to get on track. Just four runs over 20 innings the first two games, but they have responded really well today. Colbert's hit over for out number one. Colby Shelton. Two for his last 26 at Tarik today. He's got three hits. He's left the yard twice. 
Watts pull side, and this one goes backside onto one of the deeper parts of the ballpark. He's got the win in his favor. He knows if he could find a barrel and hit it in the air, he's got a good chance to leave the ballpark, and he did. Not the day to miss up in the zone, Max. So Hamid grounds out. That brings up Tyler Sheldon. What they had it is the, the scores from around SEC baseball today. That clips the inside corner with the change. Nothing at two. Kentucky all over Alabama, 10-1. Wildcats get the sweep there. South Carolina up one against Texas A&M in the bottom of the eighth. And no chase on the 0-2 offer. Tennessee's up 12 at Auburn. That game's in the sixth. And then I think there's a lot of extra eyes on Georgia at Mississippi State after what occurred there last night. It's Georgia, the Bulldogs, up by one right now. And in uh, other action for Florida and Missouri, the uh, the Gators softball team went down in extra innings against LSU. So that series finale tomorrow night we told you about. Mic'd up Monday will be a rubber match in that top 10 battle. Missouri softball is in a rubber match right now in Fayetteville. They're down 2-1 in the fifth inning to Arkansas. The tank from Tyler Shelna. He doubled it around his last time up in the seventh. But Florida sent eight to the plate. And the bases loaded and had Jack Caglione up in an 8-8 game. Didn't score, but another home run here. As that's queued out in front of home plate. Fernandez going to have to hurry. The catcher fielded that. Got him by half a step. I don't think it was Peden's ball, but he got called off by the catcher who's able to get out number two. I agree, Max. I was getting ready to criticize, I guess, Hernandez for having called Peden off. Because for me, that's the pitcher's ball, especially because He's going to be able to field with his feet already more or less set toward first base. Hernandez is going to have to get his feet sorted out. But he did it really well and made that look a lot easier than it was. Well, Thomas takes it. Uh, a second at bat. He came in in the seventh. Grounded out back to the mound. Had a chance to get an RBI and did not. And he hits one out to center field. Pierre going back, still going back. It's over his head and off the wall. Thomas is racing for second. The throw beats him, but Garcia can't snag it on a hop. And it's a two-out double. Looks like Matt Garcia comes off a little bit worse for wear here as well, shaking out that left hand. But again, these guys for Florida who have struggled, not just this weekend in the case of Dale Thomas, but of, of late. He's been in a vicious slump. It's a big deal. For the veteran guy, obviously, Dale Thomas knows how to swing the bat at this level. But that doesn't mean it's easy on a day-to-day -day basis. It could be something that unlocks his production at the plate. Got that down a little bit towards the trademark. Still got it all the way to the wall. Muscled it over the center fielder. And yes, he did. Is going around. Was Garrison. Got behind Hernandez. Not sure Dale Thomas had a good read on that. Hard to see through all the bodies. He's looking through with the secondary from second base. 10-8 Florida. Remember, they have not finished an inning in this series with the lead. They'll have a chance to here in the eighth. Scaris, it skies one out to left field. Curtis circles around it. And he's got it to end the inning. In the series overall. They'll come via the long ball. So now Mizzou really with some pressure on the offense for the first time since the middle innings yesterday. And Brock Daniels turns on one. A leadoff knock. His second base hit of the day. And just like that, tying run coming up for the plate in the form of the leadoff man, Jared Curtis. <laughs> Just get some last second direction there from Carrick Jackson. Or he exited the on deck circle and now he climbs in. Sophomore from Cypress, Texas. He's born in Detroit, the Texas Tech transfer in year one with Mizzou. He represents the tying run and it takes the first pitch strike. Four game hitting streak. He's got seven base hits in his last four. He has also scored a run in four straight games. But he's 0 for 4 today. Okay. 
comes Kate Fisher. Just off the outside in. Fisher took over for Slater. With men at the corners and just one out last inning in the seventh. And a weak fly out and the ground out got out of the inning. Two and two. Beeman on deck, Austin in the hole. Beeman and Austin combined have scored five of the Mizzou eight runs today. And Curtis goes down swinging. Timely first punch shot for Cade Fisher. And not an easy task, obviously. We talked about it a little bit with Purnell. Fisher pitching on one day of rest, but just to see hitters again. This Missouri lineup has stayed the exact same all three games in this series, so they're all getting a second look at Fisher just as they got a second look at Purnell. This makes things a little bit more challenging, but obviously Fisher with his starting background is more used to that than Purnell is. Fisher trying to thrive in this new role for the lefty. Florida's played nothing but tight games of late. And the two rallies from behind in the ninth inning against Mississippi State over the weekend. They had a come from behind victory on Tuesday versus Florida AM. That final was tight. It was 10 7. Entered this weekend 3 and 1 in one run games, but lost by one Friday, lost again by one yesterday. Even takes in. A couple of strikeouts last two times up for Beeman. Fourth-year sophomore from Lincoln, Missouri. Got his first hit of the series back in the second. And took a strike. Mizzou has never swept Florida. Now they have their work cut out for him, trying to rally late. 2-2, got a piece, but Tanner Garrison hangs on. Back-to-back case. Willie really looked uh, almost easy for Fisher. His last couple of strikeouts, just fastballs, but he's blown by Curtis, and now Beeman up in the zone. Beeman just can't catch up. Now you got the home run leader for this Mizzou team. Trevor Austin's got eight this year. Mizzou has none this weekend. That's going to be down for a base hit. They'll send Brock Daniels all the way to third. They'll get in there standing, tying run aboard with two down. Fourth time on base for Trevor Austin today. And this is the part of Missouri's lineup that's had the most success. Second hit for Austin. Lovich coming up, Mizzou's leading hitter this year, one out of four. Then Pierre, who's three for three. Hernandez, who has two hits in four trips. Everybody for Mizzou, but Jarrett Curtis, the leadoff man, who had been maybe the Tigers' best hitter the first couple of games of this series, has a hit in this game. Kevin O'Sullivan's going to come right back out of the Florida dugout. It's a, a well-traveled path for O'Sullivan between the Gators' dugout and the mound with Luke McNeely, who was so good on Friday in that game. And he was tagged with the tough luck loss. But it's still Fisher here. Tying run at first. Go ahead run is at the plate in the form of Jackson Lovich in his first series back, returning from the thumb injury. It's a spinner for strike one. So got heavy bandage, heavy tape on that left thumb. Missed seven games, returned on Friday. On the ground towards first. And they will get the out. Kate Fisher wins the race. And he's straight to the day. Colby Shelton goes the other way. Second homer of the afternoon. It goes back side. And that's the difference. 10 8 the score. And Michael Robertson is up for the first time today. It's a defensive replacement out there at center. Space of Jacob Peden is still out there. You'd imagine for Missouri fans, that 7-1 lead at the end of the second inning feels oh so long ago. And uh, again, a lot of credit belongs to the Florida bullpen. Purnell, Slater, for uh, even when they were struggling to hang around, they kept the deficit where it was, allowed their bats to, to chip away in 
rather gradual fashion. And then obviously Fisher has done well in addition, and he's set up for the win as it stands. Robertson able to hold up. But Mizzou, not that they're playing with house money after taking the first two, but the script went according to plan for them. They were able to use Carter Rustan for five innings back in the opener on Friday, and then they were able to bring in Brock Lucas with the lead yesterday. There's a liner the other way. Robertson in his first time up. Gets a base hit, kind of great wheels. Insurance run on with nobody out, and we're back to the top of the order. We've seen some Florida guys come in throughout this series off the bench after sitting for a while and bring some pretty good swings, and often it's been the case, it feels like the last couple of weeks for them. The pitch hitters coming up and hitting line drives the opposite way. Now, now it's Missouri. We talked about the Florida bullpen having to keep the lead where it is. That's the job. Uh, that's with Tigers hurlers at the moment. It's Peden, especially because, you know, they have Caden Peer, who's been on base all four times today, scheduled the lead off in the bottom of the ninth. Then J.D. or Hernandez, who's been their best hitter in SEC play, and certainly this weekend. And then the bottom of the order, which has, after mightily struggling the first couple of days in this series, been at least able to contribute in this game. There is Peer, who... Looks fine after he hit that right ankle. You can tell he's actually still stretching it out a little bit, it looks like. Oh, it's two to curl it. was up for a sixth time today. And Pounds wouldn't foul. That yeah, has not been his day. One for five with the three punch outs. Yeah, he's just one for 12 in this series. He's also already grounded into two double plays this weekend. Victor today with eight RBIs in his last eight games. It's aggressive up there. He's only got four walks on the season entering this series. And that grazed him. Caught a piece, and on an 0-2 pitch, Jacob Peden hits Curlin, and there's two on for Jack Caglio. Yeah, I'm just going to tell you now, this is not a good moment for Peden to be facing Caglio. Right now, he's thinking, especially after hitting a guy with a pitch, I just want to throw strikes. And if there's one thing you don't want to be thinking against Jack Caglione, it's I just want to throw strikes. Caglione's last time up in the seventh had the bases loaded and popped up to left with the time prior in the sixth inning. I mean, boy, straight line drive out of here with a flash of a nine. Got two home runs, both to the pole side. Both just blasted as he's behind in the count 0-2. And, and you know, Max, we have the tendency to say good piece of hitting when a guy just shoots a soft little liner the other way, right? We feel the need to point out, and those are good pieces of hitting. That's a great piece of hitting, even though it's a missile out to right field. Sometimes people are not as quick to say it. It seems self-evident. Just misses one and two. The way he keeps his hands inside that pitch. That's really not a bad pitch. It just doesn't get there. His hands, his wrists are so quick. He keeps him inside the baseball. He gets through the zone, and he gets the barrel to it. Great stop from Hernandez. Can't find it. Now he's got it. Looking too far away from him. Yeah, the home run he had versus Florida A&M, the 491 foot bomb out to right field back on Tuesday. That was a change up that was towards his knees that was inside Maybe even off the plate. Just an incredible swing. 2-2 Two -two coming. And that's in the dirt. And this time, oh, we got him. Base is loaded. And got a piece of Caglione. And then Hernandez, who was down for just a moment. Everybody seems to be okay. To your point, though, and that was, it's an impressive swing. Obviously, he hit the ball 491 feet. <laughs> but we sort of expect to see powerful lefties able to go down and get pitches like that. Maybe not hit them. 114 and a half miles an hour and 491 feet the way he did. But, you know, you imagine the, the stereotypical lefty power swing of somebody like Ken Griffey Jr. You expect those guys to have the bit of loop and a high-value hitter. I have it swings through the first pitch. So just intuitively to me, that indicates the team that drafts him, a team is likely to have him even higher on their draft board if they want to use him as a two-way guy or at least give him the chance to develop that way than if they don't. So I would think he's going to get that chance. I think guys our age probably think about the last, you know, 
elite two-way college player at least who was drafted high. You think about Brendan McKay, picked fourth overall by the, by the Padres in 2017, former Louisville. He was a lefty, power hitter, first baseman too, like Caglio. He made it to the majors in just two years and debuted in 2019. Pulled up by two, they got the bags packed with nobody out for Ty Evans, who has gotten out of his slump today with a couple of hits, a walk, and two runs scored. That's in the air out of play. And if you're Jake Peden, you got to stop the bleeding right now. You'd be pretty content if you only allowed one run this inning, but that would still mean a three-run hole for a team that's only got one run going all the way back to the second. The other thing about Caglione is that he's not just a DH when he's not pitching, right? He brings some value defensively as well. Obviously, first base is not as high a value position as some of the up-the-middle positions are where, where major league teams really see value in those guys, but he's a good first baseman. And Evans takes strike three. Huge first out for Jacob Peden as Ty Evans leaves the bat on his shoulder. Really is huge uh, in front of Colby Shelton because now, again, as unlikely as it might seem, Peden can at least have in his mind that he's potentially one pitch if everything goes perfectly from getting out of the inning unscathed. But Colby Shelton has not been letting many guys off the hook today. Shelton's got two home runs. He's got five RBIs. He entered today as the only Gator with a five RBI game this year. At five versus St. Mary's back on March 8th. A walk off opposite field home run that day. Trying to bust this game wide open. Yeah, you think about the value of Caglione at first. I don't think he was known for the defense last year, but he hasn't made an error in a year. 51 games, and his athleticism has really been showing this season. Shelton facing the 1 1. And that's in there. Boy, for Peden now, he got a real shot to get a strikeout and maybe get through here clean. A single and then back to back hit batsman. Swing and a miss. Down goes Shelton. Oh, how about it for Jacob Peden? Yeah, the off speed seemed to bother Shelton in that at bat. Goes back to the breaking ball, and Shelton just waves right over the top of it. It's not as though that was the first one he saw in the at-bat. But uh, Luke Heyman has been, with the exception of Caglione, maybe the standout among standouts with a bat for Florida over the course of the weekend. On the ground, and it is just foul. Austin was just standing right on third base. It's a tricky play for Austin because on the one hand you say, why isn't he charging the ball harder trying to get it before it goes foul? Well, if he goes running past third base, especially with momentum, it's going to be tough to reverse course and get back to the bag before Curlin can get to third. So then he's likely going to have to throw it to first. And sure, Heyman doesn't run that well, but that's softly hit. It's going to be a long throw on the run. So Austin really doesn't have any choice but to wait at third base. Uh, yes, he did on the swing. Nothing in two. Peden has been in front of everybody. Strike away from leaving the bases loaded. Mizzou hanging in this game, but hanging by a thread. The bags were packed with nobody out. Now peden has got a chance right here. And he's got a whole lot of confidence throwing breaky balls in the dirt that his man and J.D. Hernandez is going to smother it. Yeah, with how well Hernandez has swung the bat, easy to forget how good he's been defensively. It's a tough take by Heyman and a good one. He's getting that front foot out. Pretty early. He's aiming in the box right now. Two and two. 60 pitches so far for Jacob Peden. Yeah. 
way out in front, just barely caught a piece to stay alive. That was hit right off the very tip of the bat. Yeah, at this point, with how Florida hitters have struggled to deal with the, the off-speed pitch, and how Heyman, to your point, seems to be really aggressively getting that foot down, getting out in front, I feel like probably more breaking balls coming. Now almost backed up on him. Almost hit him. I think if Heyman had that back, he might have been able to wear that. Bases loaded, two outs, full count. Everybody's going to be wheels in motion on the pitch. Only one ball put in play so far in this inning. Payoff on the way, and what a job from Jacob P. Time opportunity to not only score one insurance run, but to really put up a crooked number and just about end this thing. Bases loaded, nobody out. You had 3-4-5 coming up against a reliever who was really laboring and really relying on one pitch. Kate Fisher's been great. Ryan Slater was terrific, and his Gator bullpen is not allowed to run through the last four innings. Max, I'm a little bit surprised to see Cade Fisher still out there just because, you know, this is only his fourth relief appearance of the season. It's the first time this year he's pitched in two games in the same weekend, and it's his third appearance this week. As he also threw in the midweek against Florida A&M, so he's working on, what, six-plus innings this week, and that's not something that would be typical for him split over three appearances maybe just leaving him in to face the lefty pier before going to McNeely. Because otherwise, unless McNeely is, is really worn out, I think this would be a spot you'd expect him just because you're asking a lot of Cade Fisher as uh, almost a fish out of water in terms of what his role has been up until just the last couple of weeks. Hey, I'll pitch on the way. And ball four, the freshman Gets aboard, and the tying run coming up. Hey, Cheney Air Hernandez. What a veteran A.B. from Caden Pugh. Yeah, veteran A.B. for a freshman who's got half a season of college baseball under his belt. Fifth time he's been on base today. Three hits, a couple of walks. And uh, at the very least, it means, even if this is not a powerful Missouri team with a wind blowing out, the Gators have to worry about the potential tying run at the plate for the remainder of the inning. Adier Hernandez has been Mr. Clutch so far for Mizzou this weekend. He's got one home run this year, and he's in front 2-0. And now this Taylor Stadium home faithful is starting to get into it a little bit. They're thinking this team still has life. And Garrison on 2. He takes low, and it is 3-0. And, oh. and as good as Jadier Hernandez has been, is this a green light or red light situation? 3-0 oh. in the tying run. He takes it's ball four. Tying run on, nobody out. And I think now might be time to make that change. And we're talking about 120 pitches now this week for Kate Fisher, split over three appearances. Now, McNeely did throw 50 on Friday, which is his highest number of the season, but I am now shocked Fisher that Ford is sticking with Fisher. And Fisher Jamison is now also loosening in the bullpen. Matt Garcia tried to bump. That sounded like it hit the bat, though. Pull back. It was going to hit him. Did that hit the handle? Not, or the knob, excuse me? It sounded like it did. Benefit of the metal bats for umpires. That was an easy call in the end. What's normally very difficult is listen. Oh, yeah, right off the knob. And we're going to get a pinch runner as well. As J.D. Hernandez will come out. Tucker Moore will replace him at first. Here's another look at it, coming right at you. I mean, took the bottom hand off, and yeah, it did hit the hand. It's hard when 90-plus is bearing down on you, but that's a little bit sloppy from Garcia because he leaves the bat out in front. He turns with his left shoulder as he should, but you should bring the bat up against your chest and hide it with your body. Garcia squares again and gets it down nicely down the third baseline. Fisher gets the out over at first. Job done for the veteran, Matt Garcia. Yeah, certainly job well done for Garcia. Missouri will rue that he couldn't have gotten the bat out of the way. Back on Wednesday. What a roller coaster of a game it's been. Shelton with those two home runs really got Florida back into the game and then in front for the first time. 
Pierce been terrific for Mizzou offensively, and now it's up to Mateo Serna. Base hit, good tie. And a nasty first pitch there from McNeely. Sarna sets one high down the left field line that is curling and out of play. Just like that, down at an 0-2 hole. He has the right idea in the sense that I think if all else fails, your goal is to make half-decent contact, put it in the air somewhere, force the Gators to make a play, but certainly down 0-2 right off the bench. It's amazing how quickly that can happen and feel like you're defending right away. The good news is I think the only worst thing that being 0-2 right off the bench is being 0-2 right off the bench without having taken a swing. He's taken a swing and made some decent contact, so at least he has that as he digs in now to try to battle. The freshman hitting 190, but he's back at 308 with made in scoring position. The 0-2 from McNeely. Gets away from the catcher. That's going to score a run. It's a one-run game now. More wild pitches from the Gators. And now the tying run 90 feet. This changes everything if you're certain enough. Interesting there is thing there is Cerna does check his swing at this. I think he holds up, but it actually would have been a Missouri's advantage if he had offered at this and taken off for first base. Either way, they get a run home. Let's see here. No, he doesn't go. Infield to end for the Gators. The one two. This time he did go. It's strike three. McNeely gets a massive second out with the tying run just 90 feet away. Now Brock Daniels, as a younger player, as you get a second look at Cerna chasing this time. Brock Daniels needs to be aware of what he's just seen, not only a moment ago, but this weekend. The wild pitch is getting away. The tying run 90 feet away. He needs to be looking up in the zone and expect that Florida would rather avoid spiking breaking balls if they can. Brock Daniels, two for four today. It swings through the first pitch he sees. Gotten his up, head up and down. It's been a lot of breaking balls for Luke McNeely since he first came in in this series late on Friday night. Light drive up the middle. Base hit, tie game. Daniels is digging for second and in there with a game tying double. Tell you what, Max, they were down and they probably should have been out. But whatever you might say about the Tigers, the Tigers don't quit. Daniels just keeps it simple. He's choked up. Look how far up he is. He drops the bat head on it and out of the box. He is hustling all the way. He was thinking two right away and he gets into scoring position as the potential winning run. Jarrett Curtis can end it right here. Man riding a four game hitting streak who is 0 for so far this afternoon. The scoreboard here says 0 and 2. Possibility that Curtis took too long to get in the box and was assessed a strike. <laughs> Haven't seen home plate umpire Alex Ziegler give the count. <laughs> Either way, way, now it's going to be one of the two. Now that takes care of it, doesn't it? Curtis, the only Tiger in the starting lineup without a hit in this game. Mizzou trying to sweep Florida for the first time ever. One, two coming. And it's in the dirt. Daniels got a great raid and he scampers the third. They did appeal, no swing, so it's two and two. It's a good decision by Garrison not to force that throw to third because I think every Florida fan had a vision for a moment there of one more miscue to seal off getting swept if Garrison had overthrown that one and sent it down the left field line. Two balls and two strikes. 
Curtis sends one out to shallow center, and it's down for a hit. For the first time ever, Mizzou sweeps Florida, and they do so in walk-off fashion. Yo, listen up, let me take you on a journey A quest for self-discovery, the path is never blurry Through the highs and lows, we'll find our way In the depths of our soul, where our dreams lay From the city streets to the mountain peaks We'll search for answers when our spirit speaks In the silence of the night and the chaos of the day We'll seek our truth in every single way And as this journey to ourself Rise and fall through the twists and turns. We hear the call of our inner voice guiding us along. In the pursuit of self, we'll find where we will life. The journey of yourself. Rise and fall through the twists and turns. We hear the call of our inner voice guiding us along. In the pursuit of self, we'll find where we will life. In the faces we meet and the stories we hear, we'll find reflections of ourselves crystal clear. Through the trials we face and the battles we fight We'll uncover our strength in the darkest night With each step we take and each choice we make We'll shape our destiny with every move we take For the journey itself is a lifelong quest To discover our purpose and be our best And let this journey be ourselves we'll rise and fall Through the twists and turns we hear the call Of our inner voice guiding us along In the pursuit of self we'll find we'll be the light Within you and me, 